let's go! Today on Outside the Box Reviews, we are taking a look at the NECA Evil Dead 2 Henrietta figure. This is one I have been waiting so long to get to review because she was my number six favorite figure that I purchased in 2012. If you saw that video I did, the countdown, she made the list. She was one of the best. And sadly, I didn't review her. I did not review her in 2012. So finally, here in 2013, getting around to reviewing one of the best figures from last year. NECA stepped it up with this Henrietta figure. There are several points in NECA's toy history, and I've been collecting long enough now that I feel like I can show you in my collection where those turning points are. But there were moments where you could see them making a transition between one level of cool to a whole new level. And I really think this figure was the beginning of them really starting to pack so much detail into their figures. Now, they've always been super detailed, even back when they were making pretty much statues. They normally had really good sculpts, really good paint apps. I felt as they started adding in more articulation, sometimes the paint suffered a little bit. Sometimes the little details suffered. And if you look now, look at the Dutch figures I just reviewed, some of the other ones, they've really started stepping it back up, getting back into it, getting the higher detail in now that they've added that articulation back in. And when this figure came out, I think that marks one of those transitions. It really looks like they raised that bar, put themselves at a higher place because holy cow, look at that head. She has her one dead eye, her one gone eye, the one that pops out and flies into somebody's mouth. There's the bright red blood running down her chin, all the detail in her mouth, the teeth, the tongue, everything. All the scarring on her head, the white hair kind of plastered down, the cut on the side of the head, just amazing detail. And not only does it look very true to the character makeup, but you could really see the Ted Raimi underneath. Ted Raimi was the actor who played Henrietta. He's in pretty much every Sam Raimi or Bruce Campbell film. So if you've seen any of their movies, you're probably pretty familiar with them. And you can really see him under this makeup, under this character design, which is really impressive. If we go down to look at more at Henrietta, I got to wonder how the heck this got onto Toys R Us shelves. I pointed that out in my greatest figures video but come on this is a topless old woman and this was sitting on store shelves at toys r us but we have total boob nipple detail going on there really well done and she's all bloody and gory and gross i mean really surprised they were able to sell this she has the soft rubber tatters of her dress up here one's covering one breast and the other one's totally exposed the little medallion here at the top the clasp i guess Really well detailed. Turn around and there's a lot more of it. As I said, it's all this soft rubber material, so it's really movable, really pliable. There's a separate piece here that goes around her arm, which makes it look like it's more tattered. Very, very cool looking. But hey, it's what's under that that counts. Look at all the gory detail on her belly and just the different colorations. The blood red dripping down the fresh blood. The more internal damage, the dark purples in there, the deep lacerations you can see all over the place. The folds of skin, the saggingness of it, the dark blue, like the pooling blood down here at the bottom of her gut. It's disgusting and awesome in a horrible, horrible way. Look at the arms here. I feel like they can really get through the latex puppety look of Henrietta. The kind of big folds in it that are probably supposed to be fat folds, but they really come off more as just saggy latex. And the hands are really small and well done, kind of to match the actor underneath. More deep lacerations. Great detail on the palm of the hand as well. Same with this hand over here, more deep cuts all over the place. Really amazing attention to detail, more cracks in there. Coming out to the back, there's still tons of detail under the soft rubber clothes. We can see her butt down here, a lot of great paint detail. And then the tear in the bottom of the costume. This is actually a mistake in the movie. While they were filming, the costume ripped and NECA just kind of went with it and did their own kind of gross, gory nastiness in here. It's totally just ripped up the crotch and they kind of made it all gory instead of just seeing inside the suit. Which, gross factor, if you watch the movie, beyond just the grossness of the movie itself, but when this happens, when the 
rip appears in the bottom, you could just see like sweat and crap pouring out of the suit because Ted Raimi was just baking in that costume. More great detailing on the legs here, all torn up, all messed up. I do like also that from the front, but with the gut, you can't really even tell that it is split in the crotch. You almost have to look for it. Big, chunky, fat legs, really well-detailed little feet down here. I love how the feet and the hands are little because they couldn't really make them much bigger with the makeup and everything else is huge. The big cankles on it. How often do you get an action figure with cankles? Holy crap, that's kind of weird. So if you can't tell, I absolutely love the sculpt on this figure. But we're not done yet. We actually take Henrietta's head and pop it off. And a couple cool factors here, you can see the bottom of her head kind of balloons out. That makes a tighter fit here in the joint and actually keeps the sculpt looking more continuous as opposed to having kind of a more narrow, continuing the line of the neck shape to it. It really helps the sculpt and the articulation look good. And then in a weird factor here, even though you would never do this, but you can actually see in here, there's sculpted gore inside of the neck socket. Now with the big ball joint in here, it's ruined, and I guess you could probably maybe pull that ball joint out if you really wanted to, but it's just crazy that they actually sculpted inside the neck. But then we can actually pop in Henrietta's alternate dead-eyed head. This is really cool. Still missing the eye, the really skull-looking face, the teeth popping out everywhere. It has some real soft hair on here that you can kind of shape a little bit. It's very crazy and wild. Coming down the neck, there's some great paint detail. It looks all bloody and nasty and gross, and it fits in with the rest of the sculpt really well. Really knocked it out of the park on this one. This isn't something I really expected to get with Henrietta, but it's a very welcome addition and super, super cool. For articulation, this whole piece is soft rubber because it actually has a bendy wire inside, so you can bend it however you want it to go, which is really good, really cool. You get a lot of options with it. It kind of does remind me of the Trilobite with a really good bendy wire in there, so that's awesome. And then with both heads, they'll have the ball joint here at the base of the neck. Pin socket shoulders, you can go out to the side, you can go forward and back. Bend and rotate at the elbow. Ball jointed wrists. This ball joint in the mid torso really only goes side to side. You can't get a whole lot of up and down out of it. Ball jointed legs, you can go forward and back fairly well. Out to the side as well, very cool. You actually see it's like a peg that goes in there. You really don't lose much of the sculpt in order to get that, which is superb. You can bend and rotate at the knee. And you can bend at the foot. One last bit for Henrietta, as you probably saw before, she has a hole in her back here. She comes with this very basic black display stand with a little hook coming out the back. Now this part doesn't really stay together too well, which is disappointing, but you can actually take this and peg it here in the back, and we can actually get a flying effect for Henrietta. She'll hover above the ground just like she does in the movie. Really great attention to detail on NECA's part. This figure stands well on her own anyway, but being able to do this is just added amounts of cool. If you haven't been able to guess by now, I absolutely love this figure. She made my top 10 list for 2012 for a very good reason. The detail is incredible. The articulation is pretty good. The paint apps are great. The accessory of the display stand and the extra head are so cool. There's very little to be upset about with this figure. She really is completely awesome. And if you're an Evil Dead fan, she's a must have. Heck, I think if you're just a zombie fan, you can just take the snake head off, put that normal one on there, and she's a pretty good zombie just in her own right. She's a little wild, a little obscene, very rated R figure here, but very iconic to Evil Dead 2 and just a wonderful addition to any horror fan's figure collection. I don't know if I can recommend this figure much higher than I do. She is very close to being a perfect Evil Dead action figure. So that wraps up Series 2 of Evil Dead from NECA. I don't think we're going to get any more. The only other thing we got that I haven't covered was the Hero from the Sky San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, which I didn't really feel the need to get. It was the Hero Ash with a display base and a couple paint changes and the white hair and all that stuff. Nothing I absolutely needed. I'm happy with the four figures we got total in this line. I would love to see NECA go and maybe make the Evil Ed Deadite. That would have been really cool. I don't really know what other thing I'd want to pair with it. Maybe the Flying Deadite from the very end of the movie. But I can understand if they're done with Evil Dead. There's not much more they really need to do, I think, from a fan's perspective. I'd love to see some Army of Darkness redos, just kind of update some of those ideas. Once again, probably not going to happen. NECA basically
said that Evil Dead was something we got that was a very special thing, and it was kind of their love letter to the fans. And we're lucky we got the four figures we did, pretty much. So, not expecting any more. Very happy about what we got. Make sure you check out Outside the Box Reviews on Facebook. There'll be a link below. Until next time, it's been our Outside the Box Reviews. I'll swallow your soul!